All right. Well, thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to people wherever you are all over the world in different time zones. Uh, my name's Jane Mullet. Uh, from the UN Global Compact Cities Program. And I'm just really basically here to run through a few things before we start. So if Liz, could you click the slide up to the next thing? That'd be great. Here we go. So, webinar guidance. This webinar is coordinated from the International Secretariat Office of the UN, uh, the Global Compact Cities Program based in Melbourne at RMIT University. And for all of those who have joined, welcome. Uh, here's some just basic advice. Uh, you are all in muted mode and will be taken off the mute for the discussion that follows the presentations. And when we get to that point, we would ask people who are talking, who want to contribute, to just introduce themselves first before speaking, give your name, your organisation and your country, which I didn't do. I'm currently in Australia and it's midnight. Um, you're welcome to raise questions during the webinars through the chat function um, and apparently there's also a hand raise function. If you have any network issues, please quit and then call in on your telephone. This number is listed in your registration email. If you're in Australia, you may have to flip very quickly back to the Zoom, there's, there's, a, there's a, 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 a link that will give you that number in a, just a second. So if you need to, quit and come in through the telephone. Finally, I'd just like to make sure everyone understands that the webinar will be recorded and made available to the public on, the, on our city program website at some stage in the future. So, now, I'd just like to introduce Liz Ryan, Elizabeth Ryan, who is the Deputy Director of the UN Global Compact Cities Program, and over to you. Uh, welcome, everybody, this evening. Uh, we're so pleased to have um, some very special representatives from two of our innovating cities that are specialising on water. And we have Eric Schambarger from who's the Sustainability Director from the City of Milwaukee, Jenny Kell, Professor and Global Water Security Scholar from the School of Freshwater Water Sciences, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. We have Evelyn Wallstra, who has very kindly come in at short notice to take the place of the Deputy Mayor, who was unable to join his other matter, urgent matters this morning, Welcome, um, Evelyn. And we have Hein Mollenkamp, who's the Managing Director of the Water Alliance in the Warden. Thank you all so very much. So, just in a, a very quick introduction, most people will be familiar with our organisation, but we're the urban arm of the United Nations Global Compact, uh, the largest corporate social, well, social responsibility initiative in the world. We operate from um, Melbourne in Australia, hosted by RMIT University. Our approach is based on the cooperation between city government, business and civil society and academia. And to a day, this evening, um, this morning, you will be, um, have the um, great pleasure of, of really seeing the stat in action in our innovating cities who play a very important um, role in our program. We, they are our champions. They are the cities that have made a commitment to work in, in cross-sectoral collaboration. They are uh, learning from what they're doing. They're innovating in their work, but they've also made a commitment to share uh, their knowledge and their practice across um, our network. So with going, um, taking it any further than that, I would um, like to just ask Eric to start off and to speak to us about the um, long-standing work that's been happening in Milwaukee, in Milwaukee uh, now focused on being a, as a water-centric city 
If you could just um, share your screen now, Eric, we'll move into your presentation. Thank you so much, Elizabeth and Jane. It is a pleasure to uh, work with the Compact Cities program and share what we're doing in Milwaukee around water. Uh, I'm Eric Schambarger. I'm the Director of Environmental Sustainability, and I lead what's called our Environmental Collaboration Office, or ECO, and our goal is to make Milwaukee a world-class city. It does and not need to share screen again. I actually, while you're doing that, I um, have omitted to welcome all of our attendee, attendees here today um, who have come from countries across the world. I know that we've got people here with us from um, Brazil, as many from the United States, uh, from Spain, Europe, Spain. Mm -hmm. The um, Global Compacts Water Platform. Mm. Mexico as well. Yep. Mm. So, oh, and, and the UK. And back to you, Eric. All right, thank you. Sorry for the click there. Right, so, um, our goal is to make Milwaukee a world class eco city on America's fresh coast. And so, to give you some context of where Milwaukee is, we are in the middle of the United States, but we view ourselves as a coastal city uh, because we are on the shores of Lake Michigan and the Great Lakes, uh, one of the largest bodies of fresh water in the world. And um, our charge to make Milwaukee an eco city starts at the top with, with Mayor Barrett, who's really done a lot to um, make sustainability a really important issue and raise the profile of that issue uh, for our city. Uh, we have in, in our office what we call the new triple bottom line. Maybe you've heard of the, the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profits. We put our own spin on it here at, in Milwaukee, we call it ecology, economy, and what I like to call it, community. The people in civil society and academia and, and just regular citizens who help make our work possible and act as partners in the work that, that we do. And uh, I think this is important because we want to sh explain to the public and, and in general that we understand that a healthy ecology is uh, the underpinnings of a healthy economy, that you can't have long-term sustained economic growth without caring about uh, protecting the environment and you can, you can do both. So that's what we're trying to do with our water centric city initiative is, is build our economy around water technologies while also improving uh, the, uh, the underlying ecology. Uh, we do have an overall sustainability plan called Refresh Milwaukee that was passed in 2013. It has eight different er areas, everything from buildings and energy and food systems. But water was really central to that and in our sustainability plan, uh, it's, it calls for boosting Milwaukee's profile as a water-centric city, and that, that's what we'd like to talk about today. We also have a range of other programs that our office runs, particularly around climate action. And I think for our, our friends around the world, I want you to know that American cities continue to take climate uh, change seriously and continue to uh, take bold actions to uh, try to reduce our carbon footprint. And I think there's a connection between energy and water use, and I just wanted to folks to know that there are still plenty of people in the United States that, that care about climate change and are working to, to make a difference on that front. Uh, but we're here today to talk about our water-centric city initiative. And um, that is a new initiative that, that we've launched, not only for the city of Milwaukee, but for other cities that want to adopt a similar framework around water. And we know that water is a very comprehensive um, topic. There's lots of different facets to it and so with our water centric city initiative we wanted to show what milwaukee is doing while also kind of setting goals and creating a framework around lots of different areas so the areas that we came up with and we worked with jenny uh, from the university of wisconsin milwaukee and her students uh, they have a fantastic school of freshwater sciences there we sat down with with them and our business community and said what is it what does a water centric city look like what does it really mean to um, embrace water in a special way and understand that and kind of fold water into everything we do as a city. And so the seven different principles that we came up with were water leadership, uh, arts, talent, culture, and education, uh, water technology, and trying to, trying to come up with new solutions to our 21st century challenges, uh, 
green infrastructure, that's about managing stormwater on site and, and relying less on pipes to just move rainwater and trying to actually um, capitalize on, on what we call eco ecosystem services, so plants to help manage stormwater. Uh, applied water research is really important, and Jenny is going to talk about that, but our partnership with the, with the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and their School of Freshwater Sciences is a really great partnership where their researchers and, and professors can do the research and then we as policymakers in the city of Milwaukee can help um, try to design policies that reflect science because science-based policy is so important. Uh, fishable and swimmable waters uh, is a key goal that we've had for many years in this country to try to restore our waterways to the point where you can fish and swim in them. And then lastly, sustainable and a healthy water supply is so important to people. People in our country tend to take that for granted, uh, but it's something that we have to think about. So to give you a little bit more context, uh, we want to think about Milwaukee as a place that values water. Um, you know, and, and ways we do that are trying to show that we are a coastal city uh, here on the on Lake Michigan. These are some scenes from around Milwaukee. Uh, that's the Hone Bridge over um, our harbor. Bradford Beach down here on the bottom left is a beach that for many years uh, was closed most of the time due to pollution issues and, and working with the School of Freshwater Sciences we identified where the pollution was coming from and fixed the problem. So, so now it's a really uh, great feature for our community where people can actually you know, use the beaches again and not have to worry about getting, getting sick. And then the downtown river walk is where we built uh, basically an entertainment corridor so people can, can use the rivers. A uh, hundred years ago, um, cities like Milwaukee basically used the rivers as an open sewer. And because we've been able to clean up the, the waterways, we realized people want to spend time on a clean river. And so uh, we opened up this great river walk so that people can, can use it for dining and the like. And then on the upper right corner, you see a kind of a rendering. This is a, um, a project that is in progress right now uh, in our inner harbor in the city of Milwaukee, which I'll talk more about later. We had big dock walls, um, it was very inaccessible for, for people to use the water resources. And so we're finding ways to kind of open up the dock walls and create ways so people can access the, the water for kayaking and, and other recreational uh, uses. Uh, water leadership is important, and I think that means speaking out and having our mayors um, talk about the importance of water issues uh, locally and globally. Uh, the mayors on the Great Lakes, I think, have a, a big stake in protecting our, our freshwater resources. And so we are members of what's called the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. This is a collaboration of mayors, not only U.S. mayors, but Canadian mayors all up around the Great Lakes. Uh, who speak out on issues of collective importance to the Great Lakes, so everything from invasive species to uh, proposals to divert water from the Great Lakes. Uh, so we really work together with a shared policy interest um, going forward. And then I think our partnership with the UN Compact Cities Program is so important. I, you know, we have this idea of thinking globally and acting locally. But I think now we're understanding how important it is to partner globally with the UN Cities Program, uh, with cities from around the country to share best practices, and I think to challenge each other to do better so that we have a, some uh, positive momentum and peer pressure to do the right thing. Uh, and our water-centric city initiative is a way to do that. Uh, it's a way to share what we're doing locally and also kind of create a network of, of best practices around, uh, around water. Um, speaking of leaders, I wanted to put a plug in for our Water Leaders Summit, which will be held in Milwaukee on June 27th through our Water Council. Uh, it's in, viewed as an international uh, event. We had uh, lots of speakers from Israel last year, and we built a kind of a, a partnership with them, and, and as well as Daegu, South Korea. So there's uh, cities from and delegations from around the country are coming to Milwaukee to share best practices around water. We invite you all to uh, log on to our website and consider uh, making the trip to Milwaukee and seeing in person uh, what we have you know, what we're doing around water and, and learn from each other. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Jen, uh, Jenny to talk about what UWM is doing, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee on applied water research. Jenny. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate what Eric has said about Milwaukee's identity being largely 
focused around our priorities in the environment and the interdependence of the environment being sustainable and the economy being able to grow. And one of the things that we're doing at School of Freshwater Sciences, along with the University Consortium in the Milwaukee area, is we're looking at how do we create good science and good information so that we can improve our decision-making process and also inform those people who are working very sincerely to make good decisions. Uh, one of the greatest assets that we have in the Milwaukee area is our human capital around water resources. And we have that in all sectors. And a very important element of that is the cooperation that we have between those sectors. So the city, for example, under Mayor Barrett and Eric's championship um, has done a good job of connecting with the universities and water programs and incorporating that information. One of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to look at basically how to keep the water clean. And we're doing that in a context of political uncertainty at the international level at times. And we're also looking at keeping the water clean in the, in the context of climate variability and trying to figure out how it is we make reliable, long-term, forward-thinking decisions in the context of that variability. So we're putting a lot of work into keeping the water clean. Um, we're working particularly hard on the river and the lake and the confluence of the two. And I think it's really demon some demonstrated leadership in connecting with the political champions as well as the private sector and building some positive and productive partnerships between the university system and the private sector and also other elements of the public sector. In addition to the municipality, we also work with over 100 different community groups in the Milwaukee area and over 2,000 individuals that are working very hard to forward our identity of Milwaukee as a water-centric city. One of the most important projects that we've worked on recently is developing the water-centric cities framework in which a tremendous amount of very rigorous research went into looking at concrete metrics, indicated the metrics for some of the principles that we hold most high in our city around the priority of water. And so we've taken a look at how do we measure, how do we indicate to other cities um, that we do have a water-centric city focus. And if other cities are excited about participating, which we anticipate they are, how do they self-identify as a water-centric city? What does that actually mean? How do you incorporate that into your identity, into your leadership, into your technology, into your universities and applied research, into your community, into water access, water quantity, water quality, and the culture of your city? And so that's one of the areas in which uh, the university and the city relationship, I believe, is thriving. I'd like to add, I think uh, one of the groups in Milwaukee is called Milwaukee Riverkeeper. They do a, a great job with kind of citizen science. So they have citizens out there doing water quality sampling and things like that. And, and again, the ways that this can inform policy, I mentioned the Bradford Beach example earlier. I just think it's such a wonderful example. So this beach uh, 15 years ago was closed a lot of the time because you know, the health department would post E. coli warnings. And there was a bacteria problem in the sand on the beach. And I think a lot of people didn't know where it was coming from. They assumed maybe it was from seagulls. And researchers at the School of um, Freshwater Sciences were able to more precisely pinpoint sources of pollution, which were coming from nutrients and things from a bluff that was uh, had a stormwater outfall that was flowing across the beach. And so we were able to utilize green infrastructure to kind of uh, capture that storm water and instead of having it go across the beach actually in, you know going into the ground and that really made a big difference in cleaning up the beach so that's just one example of how it's important to listen to our scientists when setting policy and trying to find solutions to our, our water quality problems um, water technology is also something that we're really focused on here in the city of milwaukee and that means uh, finding solutions for the global water challenges. So we're blessed with plenty of fresh water here in the city of Milwaukee, but we know globally that there are challenges with water, uh, fresh water scarcity. Um, and so we're working to identify next generation pumping technologies and filtration technologies and metering technologies so that we can use our water more efficiently uh, and more sustainably. So we have what's called the Global Water Center in Milwaukee. It's uh, one building for many different businesses around water to uh, locate, collaborate, not only with each other, but with uh, area academic institutions, including Marquette University and University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And then the government has offices there as well. So when Elizabeth did her 
um, kind of intersecting circles of business, government, and civil society working together. Uh, we have a physical location where that is specifically designed to happen here at the Global Water Center. Um, I, I mentioned green infrastructure. So there's the water in our lakes and rivers, but we know that the water that falls on our land uh, contributes to the quality of water in our, um, in our rivers and lakes. And so we are uh, moving aggressively to use green infrastructure as a way to treat uh, and manage stormwater on site before it, it infiltrates into our, our lakes and rivers. And so these are some examples of what we, how we've done that. Uh, we have what we call a green corridor initiative on 6th Street, where we're trying to take a whole stretch of street and use it as a showcase for green infrastructure and community gardens. We have a green street stormwater management plan so that every time we reconstruct a street, we're looking for opportunities for green infrastructure and our medians. Um, we had developed a, a Milwaukee River overlay district to basically create a conservation zone around one of our key rivers. Um, so we have a, a nature corridor in our city. I mentioned the revitalization of Bradford Beach. And then lastly, we are currently doing a full-blown green infrastructure plan for the city that we uh, anticipate releasing in the next month or two. Um, fishable swimmable rivers is another key area. I'll turn that over to Jenny to discuss that. Yeah, one of the great ways that we've been able to actualize the Clean Water Act here in Milwaukee is to clean up a lot of the historical industrial pollution in our river systems, which feed right into the Great Lakes. Again, as Eric mentioned, the world's largest surface freshwater system. And uh, before that industrial pollution, those rivers were used for swimming lessons, for recreation, and then through the process of industrial pollution became um, barely touchable. And since the Clean Water Act, we've had 40 years of really quite tremendous successes in the Milwaukee area of cleaning up those rivers. And you can see from the image, um, they're now widely used for recreational purposes. And it's one, I would argue, of Milwaukeeans' favorite um, things to do in the city is to use the waterways, either to walk along them, to dine along them, to kayak on them, to boat in them. Again, um, this particular waterway does flow right into Lake Michigan, so it's great for um, recreation. And you get a sense of the connection between the city and the river and the ecosystem. Uh, because the river goes right through the middle of the city, as you can see here, it's an urban uh, river. And to be out in nature on the river and to be able to look at the face of the city from the perspective of the water is a really important part of the Fishable Swimble, Swimble Rivers uh, initiative. I know we're running short on time, so we'll uh, pick up the pace here. Um, so another uh, element of our water-centric city is having sustainable water supply and healthy drinking water. Uh, we're, again, fortunate to have a sustainable water supply, and we're trying to keep it that way. Uh, there's what's called in Milwaukee the Great Lakes Compact, which is a binational agreement to protect uh, use of the Great Lakes. And so we rigorously um, work to enforce that speak up about it. And then of course, healthy drinking water is important. A lot of work being done on that. Um, I think we have an excellent water supply from our from Milwaukee Water Works. Uh, arts, talent, and culture is really important. So these are just some quick examples of how people in Milwaukee come together to celebrate water. One is from a group called the Milwaukee Water Commons, a citizen group uh, committed to talking about the importance of water. And there's an example of an event they held on Lake Michigan. Um, to really just celebrate our water resources. And then the Green Schools Consortium is another example. It's a group that's committed to taking out um, pavement and these you know, just blacktop schoolyards and, and actually incorporating nature uh, into the schoolyards and also using it as an opportunity to teach kids about the science of ecology. Just very briefly, um, we have this overall city initiative, but we're also trying to incorporate uh, water specifically into our redevelopment zones. We call them eco-industrial districts. These are former brownfield sites or industrial sites that are being primarily redeveloped for an industry, but incorporating green infrastructure, better connections to our neighborhoods, and attracting sustainability businesses. Um, the best example is the Menominee Valley. This was an industrial wasteland 15 years ago, and it's been uh, re totally redesigned and, and cleaned up. And you can see the connections of river right next to industry and how you can make, you can have both really if you, if you design things in the right way and intentionally uh, think about ecology and, and your redevelopment decisions. And then I'll, I'll just finish off with our harbor district. So this is on the backside of Milwaukee's harbor. 
Um, these pictures are aspirational right now. It, it doesn't look great. I mean, it, it had coal piles that uh, fortunately, because we're converting to, to natural gas and ultimately renewables, we're reducing um, the coal piles that, are, that were in the Inner Harbor uh, and other cleanups, industrial cleanup that's being done. And so this is our uh, aspirations for, for how to clean that up going forward. And uh, we hope to extend the river walk uh, into into this harbor district, and again, finding this blend of industrial uses, but also uh, recreation, and and showing that you can can uh, incorporate nature and the environment successfully together. So that concludes our our remarks. Uh, we look forward to hearing from our friends in Leeward. Um, thank you very much. That's. It's such a tall ask to be able to cover all that you do in Milwaukee in 20 minutes. Like it, I encourage people there to, to go and visit and have some days there. So I just um, like to hand over to, uh, is it Anka first and then Hein? Would, uh, oh, sorry, uh, you need to unmute yourselves or I can unmute you. Unmute. Fine, sorry. Okay, apologies. I think you should be um, on mute. We're in? Yeah. 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 Uh, actually, sorry, just to interrupt, Hein, you might need to unmute yourself, bottom left hand side. But if um, we can, yeah, if, if you just want to um, head off and start talking. Yes, I'm, I'm Evelyn. I'm not Anke Hoekstra, but I'm Evelyn Walstra. I'm the program manager for the water campus at the municipality of Leeuwarden. And uh, as Liz already uh, mentioned, our uh, vice mayor, uh, Viso Doustra, unfortunately is not able to attend this meeting. So uh, he sends his uh, sincerest apologies and I will try to uh, replace him, of course, as good as uh, uh, possible. Well, uh, first of all, a uh, very warm welcome to you all from the city of Leeuwarden. This year, Leeuwarden is the cultural capital of uh, Europe. And to show how water technology is an integral part of our region and our city, many of the projects uh, around, wa around water and water technology. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was waiting for this. Uh, well, there's another one. The fountain you, yeah, this fountain, uh, it's called Love. Uh, recently opened in the, in the city center of Leeuwarden. And it's one example of how art and culture can be interwoven with technology. The mist fountain, designed by the Spanish artist Jan Plenza, maybe you know him, features a mist making system designed in cooperation with Wetzes, the Leeuwarden based European Center of Excellence of Water. In addition, it's an example of how the municipality promotes and facilitates water technology as a spearhead for economic development. As mentioned, one of our, one of our regional economic focus points is water technology. We see opportunities in the sector to strengthen our regional economy and to become more innovative. One of our DNA, of our region. And as you can see on the map, uh, Leeuwarden is centrally located in the province of Amsterdam and situated in the northern part of the Netherlands and close to the Wallensee. Water is never far away in Friesland with its lakes and its isles. Water has formed our culture, our way of living and our landscape. Friesland and water go back to the beginning of human civilization within the area. First, it was the fight against water time of the Industrial Revolution, this changed to the fight against water pollution. The province has found many solutions to water issues. Our city has been working on water-related issues and technology for more than a decade, and Campus Leeuwarden is one of the outcomes of this process. It's to contribute to solving both regional and global water issues foster economic growth and development and contribute to reaching global goals. The Water Campus provides a new, unique environment 
in which scientific research, applied research, you can see, um, and business development cooperate closely to form an innovation chain. A chain of links between education, specialized research, test programs, specialist laboratories, an application center, demo sites, and last but not least, marketing, matchmaking, and successful business promotion. I uh, can tell you more about that, of course. In Leeuwarden, we created an environment in which scientific institutions work closely with business in order to create cutting edge solutions to relevant business problems. In addition, the cooperation with the University of Applied Sciences makes sure the scientific discoveries can be tested in more applied setting before being brought to the market. The three managing partners are WETSES, CEW and Water Alliance form the core of the water campus. The campus not only provides an innovative and fruitful setting for businesses and entrepreneurs. Together with the educational institutes, we have created educational programs ranging from electives uh, on primary school level to PhD opportunities at WETSES. Currently, an education on water technology can be obtained in Leeuwarden on all levels, from vocational education, education to master's and PhD degrees. The international cooperation organized and encouraged by Water Camp Leeuwarden leads to talent and entrepreneurship, which contribute to solutions for global water problems. The presence of the water campus is also important in creating and fostering jobs for highly educated individuals, sending these people to the region. The Water Campus has created more than 50 startups. 2,000 people work in the water technology sector in the province of Friesland. And the ambition is a growth of water technology employees towards 3,500 in 2030. Our municipality supports the activities of the water campus in various ways. I, I tell you some examples. We have organized the water battle with help of a serious game. And the serious game was created by a local serious game uh, company. Children learn how to reduce the use of drinking water. The children, we are also reached the parents. And this game had a long term effect even three months after playing the game. New technology also helps to raise awareness for water scarcity and other water related issues. And second, it's my final example, is the role the municipality plays as a launching customer for the new technology. As municipality, we are responsible, responsible for the sewers. An innovative company named Acquaint has developed a robot for pipeline monitoring. This robot helps us to analyze the quality of the pipelines and it helps to reduce costs because we know more precisely which parts of the sewer need to be replaced and which, part are, which parts are just fine. We help the company Acquaint to start and to develop their company and the technology helps us to reduce costs. So, win-win situation. Well, there are, of course, more examples. And I think, Hein, you can tell much more about these examples and much more about what technology uh, tech, uh, in Leeuwarden. So I'm pleased to give you the words. Thank you very much. So if we could just um, invite Hein in to um, share your screen. Yep, I'll share the screen. Really appreciate um, Evelyn, you coming in on the last minute. Was, that was um, a great overview. Well, thank you. So, this is, uh, you see all the screen? Yes, beautiful. Uh, thank you for the introduction. As Evelyn already explained, some, uh, some things about creating the water campus as itself. Well. Uh, I think if you look also to the story of Eric in Milwaukee at the end of the, the 
session, you will see that there is many similarities, not or nothing, because there's both technology developments that uh, that's that's an interesting thing we share. And uh, I will explain a little bit more about this. Water Campus, as what we say, is an innovating uh, ecosystem for water technology. Water as a, as a whole is, a, is a, of course, a very big issue in the Netherlands. As you know, two thirds of the Netherlands is in fact below sea level. So we have learned to on one side, fight against the water, but also live with the water. And uh, what we do at Water Campus is in fact, uh, focusing upon the uh, area of water quality and uh, water quality we can say water process type of technologies and that's what is developed on one side at the water campus as well and uh, I'll give you an overview what you see here is the, 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 the way we cooperate as well with Milwaukee isn't it the amount of the water council was there in Leeuwarden uh, when we end, were entering the UN innovating city uh, as, uh, as in the program of a global compact so um, this is uh, in fact the Netherlands, uh, that is the, the, the small orange dot in the, in, the, in the middle of the picture, which is only a small country in the Europe. So you can imagine that uh, water and water technology developments are very important on one side for the Netherlands, but uh, for the companies who develop it, it is the, the export and the sharing and cooperation with uh, companies all over the world is very crucial. So uh, that is uh, one of the, the things when we started the water campus as it is now, to say, well, we are the European water technology hub. And not only for Europe, but also with a lot of connections, of course, on one hand to, for instance, Milwaukee, which I consider as one of the other water hubs in the world. And there is uh, hubs like that in Singapore and in Israel. And so we, in that way, we have many connections. Going back to uh, the Netherlands, well, you can say the Netherlands is, is known as a, a water innovating country. And not only on, on the field of water quantity, as you know, building dikes and harbors, but especially also in the field of water quality issues. And those are exactly the fields of uh, water quality where we as Water Campus uh, are focusing on. And that can even be many different things, isn't it? It can be drinking water, issues, it can be about wastewater, it can be about processed water, it can be about uh, connections through water and uh, food, water and energy, all on those uh, borders there is innovations in water technology. Well, the picture which says in fact all what is the water campus as an ecosystem is, is this one. And it is uh, started in the idea that uh, we will help companies speed up their developments from an ID to the process of researching and scaling up to bringing it to the market. And uh, well, for that reason, you may know that in the Netherlands, water technology is most of the time done by SME type of companies. So uh, that means uh, we do not encourage themselves, for instance, to uh, invest heavily in their own laboratories, but for that reason, they can better share facilities. And, this whole water campus idea is, is in fact grown around that. How can we help companies speed up developments and help them, uh, for instance, with uh, piloting stages or research stages or scaling up stages? Uh, for that reason, we have several organizations active at the water campus. And uh, well, you will hear in these uh, few, uh, few minutes we have here a few uh, uh, of them. Uh, well, this picture shows that water is not at itself. Uh, there is a lot of innovation taking place, of course, always in the cross-sectoral uh, things like food, water, water energy, and even uh, if you say water, food, uh, energy nexus, that's all where a lot of those innovations take place. Uh, well, it's not about, uh, about only technology. And, and setting up an ecosystem like this, you can imagine that cooperation is, is crucial. Right? Not only cooperation at research level or at company level, but uh, especially where government and companies and researchers come together, that is where the, the trick uh, takes place. And, and setting up cooperations like this is very crucial. And I think uh, uh, you also hear it from, uh, from the Water Council in Milwaukee, uh, that that same takes place here at the Water Campus. We cannot do without each other. Right? So, for instance, Evelyn mentioned that the 
local governments can be very crucial uh, if you, uh, for instance, want to be a launching customer for certain type of technologies. That, that's a crucial cooperation there. It's, it, it's not only about funding or finance, it's also about really want to be a, a launching customer for new type of technologies. And that is, uh, is very crucial in our setup here. Well, what you uh, already saw is this picture that the water campus is not only a campus where education takes place or where universities do research. It's a really a integrated system where scientific research, applied research and businesses are, uh, together with the governments are very integrated. And that makes it a very special place here. So the education is, uh, is on one end also very crucial. Uh, you know, water technology is not a, a, a science in itself. It is a very multidisciplinary uh, approach. So uh, what is one of our challenges, of course, how can we inspire young people to go to study in these beautiful water technology sciences? That's why we have many programs. And you can say at Water Campus, uh, students can start already in, on pretty young age to get connected to water technology. And we have study programs uh, at Water Campus for all ages, and you can even end up as a professor here at uh, Water Campus. So that is, in fact, built up in the last 10 to 15 years. Here. So starting in this uh, circle I showed you about how to get from an ID to uh, the market, then the, uh, a very crucial part in there is how do we achieve that IDs come one step further than only a fundamental uh, step. So therefore, WETSIS is a very crucial uh, research institute here because the interesting thing is what they managed to do in the last 10, 15 years is setting up a system where universities and companies work together on breakthrough type of technologies. Today, you can say that it is a, a cooperation of some 23 different universities from all over Europe where PhDs from those universities work together at a lab a research facility here in Leeuwarden and at the water campus. And to make sure that it is not only uh, fundamental research, uh, also companies uh, are very important in this Wetsis Institute. So at the moment, some 105 companies from all over the globe, because they can really enter from all over the world in this research program, they make sure that it is at the end always some market driven. Uh, market-driven research here at Wetsis. At the moment, some 20 of 65 uh, PhD product, projects run at the Wetsis research. Well, it is uh, too much companies attached to Wetsis, so you see uh, very small uh, letters here, but th those are the names, you can always find them back at the Wetsis uh, web website, who are participating here. These are the 23 different universities participating at the Wetsis Institute. As I said, they are coming from all kind of European universities. Going a little step further in this uh, circle, you see if, if what happens at Wetsis in fact is that you go from an ID to a proven ID on research level. But that, that is really in fact the starting point for the next steps and, and the next steps are scaling up your technology to, uh, and, uh, to uh, uh, a way that you can really bring it to the market. So having facilities here at Water Campus, which are, for instance, the water application center and demo sites, those are places where companies can go individually with their pilot and with even help from students of the universities of applied science here, they can really uh, do a lot of research on, on applied, uh, in the applied phase to scale up their pilot to a level where they can bring it to their first customers. For that reason, we do not, do not only have this water application center, which is a separate lab where companies can rent a spot to do their applied research, but you can also get help from an organization, for instance, like Center of Expertise of Water Technology. They can bring in all kinds of uh, students which may help uh, the companies uh, in their uh, applied research phase. And this is a beautiful area where you in fact see that students and companies are coming together. And, and this is important because there, the companies can work with those students and they see their new employees, in fact, uh, growing there. 
Well, the next step is uh, several um, what we call demo sites. In fact, you can say it's test beds where, uh, for instance, containerized pilots can be tested and run in live situations. We have some five or six different uh, demo sites uh, available there. You see a few of those here. They are all in the vicinity of the water campus. And we have five or six different ones because there is all kinds of different water to treat, of course. There is desalination to, done, to be done. There is drinking water pilots to be done. There is uh, water from domestic uh, municipal wastewater treatments. There is one of the latest one. It's a very interesting one. It's a hospital wastewater treatment facility. Those are facilities where companies can bring their pilot and run their pilot for a couple of weeks or months how long they need it and go away there. So the demo sites, they say, they stay there and the companies can, uh, can leave again after their pilots. These uh, demo sites can be used uh, by companies from all over the world. So that's also a good way to cooperate with other cities, for instance, because it's really a tough job to bring those demo sites to life. It's, uh, that, and it's all here. So uh, it's not that very, uh, difficult to bring a pilot overseas to, uh, to test it here. It's more difficult, for instance, to overcome all the regulations. Eh? Normally, you uh, have to wait for four, five, or six months before you get your environmental permits. What we did here is make a sort of an umbrella agreement with the government that you can go there tomorrow with your pilots without any hassle on environmental permits. Okay. Uh, well. uh, so, just one sec. Um, I Hi, no, just if you could just finish with this, and then I'd really like to open to the um, our uh, number of other participants, and yeah, it's then. probably a really good point for them for if we can just call in and and ask them to some contribute some questions. Can I have one minute, or is uh, it yes, there? yes, no, definitely, yeah, and no, I'm just sort of uh, setting for the. You can always see thing. the presentation later. Okay, we're happy to talk later about it as well. I, I just I can feel from here that they're itching to uh, <laughs> to start to get to <laughs> talk to everyone. What I want to do is is uh, uh, quickly say, well, there is some 200 companies attached to the water campus uh, in in whatever way, from inside the Netherlands, but also from abroad. So that is interesting. We are a sort of a portal to the European market uh, from out of our water campus, so that may be interesting for companies from outside of Europe. Uh, well, in that way, we say, well, we want to connect water hubs. Eh? It's not for nothing that we uh, also team up with Milwaukee a lot, and I think we can do even much more together. So, but we just started, isn't it? So, you see here the pictures of those water hubs, and the Milwaukee is in there, but then they they also recognize other ones where they have contacts as well. If you give me uh, half a minute, then I want to give you a second to very interesting happening we have in September, which is what we call the European Water Technology Week, where we invite people from all over the world to discuss with us the possibility of cooperation. And to show that, we have a very short uh, movie, it's half a minute, so I will start it, and that's the end of my presentation. Very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Again, it's the, it's the same thing as with Milwaukee. It's like, how do you I mean the incredible amount of work that you're doing over there and ask you to talk about it for 20 minutes? I, I'm going to um, just open to our uh, participants and just uh, if you'd like to raise your hand, if you'd like to talk. And I think from our technology, I, I allow you to... to um, to speak through, if you could please uh, introduce yourself, uh, your name and where you're from before you direct your question. 
I hope I have, there's not, so I hope I have, we, we, I think it's a matter of raising your hand with the technology. In, in the meantime, um, is there any questions that are between our um, panellists? Lisa, I'd like to ask um, both Milwaukee and Le Warden, um, it's just very exciting to hear the, the how the business, the government and the um, uh, civil society have worked together. And I'd just like to hear from you where you started. I know, I know it's a big question, but, you know, did you start, um, obviously you started with the government, but what, what's your quick advice to cities about how to start? Yeah. Perhaps Eric, you could take sure. this first. Um, yeah, I think in Milwaukee, we really started to get momentum once the business community yeah. started to rally around this. I, I, for us, that really helped get the ball rolling to, for the existing water companies to say, hey, we have, really have a strength here. Uh, let's work together and, and press forward. But it, I can't really point to any one person who made it all happen. It was just people started talking about this idea and once once the idea started to get rolling, you, you could see the, the university starting to see the potential and the School of Freshwater Sciences um, grew. And then you know, the city had been doing things for years around water, but I don't think we had coalesced around the idea of water being so central to our identity. Uh, and so once you started to get the momentum going, uh, it really just took off from there. And then, then more and more kind of nonprofit groups and civil society groups uh, started speaking up and frankly saying, oh, you want to be a water centric city? What about this issue? What about this issue? And um, so it's, it's some of it's grown organically, but I think because of our unique place on the water, it was, we have this kind of visual um, sense that water is important to us because of our place on Lake Michigan. And so um, people could really connect with that, I think. And so it, it kind of took off from there. I think one of the ways that government helped the businesses start is planning a lot of the seed money for our water technology area. Um, you know, basically setting aside a place um, for businesses to kind of co-locate uh, was really important to kind of, again, create that sense of identity around water. And I think the city did play a big leadership role in getting that global water center uh, off the ground. If I can just add to that from a citizen's perspective, I think one of the most important characteristics in launching was the perception of sincerity. I think the city government has always been perceived, at least in recent history, as we've been building this water identity as sincere. And that's made a huge difference in um, my work in comparison to cities where the perception is that the government is not sincere. And so that's really important for launching this kind of program. Um, and so I thank the city for that. Um, but because that important characteristic was in place, it really allowed the private sector and the public sector to partner in a very genuine way that really understood the interdependence of the economy with the environment, as opposed to setting up the economy and the environment as juxtaposed or competitive with each other. Um, and we've kind of moved past that and are trying to develop an economy in which we understand we need to sustain both. Great. Hi, yeah, I, I think in Leeuwarden it started 20 years ago or so with uh, a few persons from the government together with a few persons of the university. But Hein, uh, afterward, after that, um, I, can, I think you can tell that more about that. Yeah, well, you know, it's, 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 it, it looks like what Milwaukee says as well, isn't it? But here it also was uh, starting more and more after your initial start in the province and the, the, the mm. city. That there is a lot of companies already for a long time in uh, this province around on, on this water tech business. And that had to do with a typical uh, area that we are, we are also a sort of a dairy state. That is another thing we have in common with Wisconsin, isn't it? So there's a lot of dairy here and dairy factories. So from already a long time ago, there were a lot of companies treating water from dairy factories. So that, that, that was maybe already a long time. And there, now things come together because when start, you start, you also need visionary people who bring things forward. 
So with starting this, this whole water campus, which in fact started when Wetzis was founded so 15 years ago, they created the idea around this ecosystem. And now things grow and then we become in a flow as well. Right? So we get more international connections. Uh, the Water Alliance was started some eight, nine years ago. Uh, all those demo facilities, they grow. So it's really an integrated system. And again, I, I stress the fact that it is very important that also governments play a crucial role in getting things running. Yeah? You cannot do without each other there. If it's only companies, okay, then, then you end up in a company situation. But you have to make something integrated. And I think this, is, this, this water technology makes it also special, also for a province like Friesland, because everyone is already concentrating on wealth and, 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 and that kind of stuff. Eh? So water technology is quite, quite something uh, special where you can also grow in. And, and th this is the way also to, to bring this water campus to a European level. Thank you. This is Eric. I want to just, uh, if I could just, I want to give some credit to some of those leaders in Milwaukee that made it happen, if I could. And, and that includes Dean Amhouse from the, the Water Council, uh, Kevin Schaefer at our sewage district, uh, who's done an amazing job, as well as Mayor Barrett. So the leadership in coming together and working together is, is so important. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, so, and I want to add something. It's, it's very, uh, <laughs> can I add something? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. you can. Yeah. And then I'm going to throw to Jess Blom in the US. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to add that it's very um, important uh, that the government choose every four years uh, for water technology because uh, yeah, after four years there are new people uh, and they also have to choose the same uh, themes. Um, and that was the, the thing in, um, in the province of Friesland and in the city of Leeuwarden. So it worked. Thank you. So uh, Jess, uh, you might have to unmute your settings. Um, I've set you to talk. Uh, Jess is uh, wanting to um, contribute and he's in the USA. Are you there, Jess? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? So nice to hear your voice. Yeah, this is, so this is Jesse Blum. I'm in uh, Baltimore, Maryland in the United States at Johns Hopkins University. Um, from I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Originally, I've worked with the uh, uh, the folks there, um, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and um, I'm just happy to still be connected. Um, my, my question is both for um, the folks in Milwaukee and the folks in Leowarden. Um, um, some of these big ideas you're working on, uh, environmental restoration um, and economic development, these, are, these seem to be regional issues. Uh, you, you know, you can, do, you can do some work at the city level, and obviously we see the results of that. But for example, if you want to improve uh, water quality in the rivers, you have to be working with surrounding cities, counties, and the state level. In the Netherlands, I guess the equivalent will be the province level. Um, and the same is true on the economic development side. So I'm wondering if you can speak to um, ways in which cities are talking to each other, Cities are talking to states and provinces um, to work together so you're not isolated in your city working on these issues. Totally right on that, of course. Mm. <laughs> well, from my perspective, I, I do talk more from the water technology development side. Which of course, for the region is an economical development of creating new jobs and creating bigger industries eh, as far as still we still uh, are SME level type of industries here but the technology which is developed that is of course marketable and uh, can be used worldwide and that's the interesting thing for instance if you look to a uh, uh, yeah you can talk for hours about all kinds of developments but one of the technologies developed here and still in the final pilot stage is is this blue energy technology which creates uh, sustainable energy from the from the sea, salt water from the sea, and the uh, fresh water running from the river in the sea. And that's already uh, researched for about more than 10 years probably in all kinds of stages of upscaling. But once it is in full scale, it is a very interesting technology to share with other uh, countries. So that, that is of course, you do, you do not do that alone. Eh? You're totally right on that. So. And I would just say, uh, Jesse, it's uh, great to hear your voice. Jesse, uh, 
didn't give a full introduction. He really helped uh, in the early phases of our work with being a water-centric city when he was here in Milwaukee. So thank you, Jesse, for um, your, your help. But to your question, uh, absolutely, you can do what you can locally. And I think it's important to lead locally um, with, with wetlands restorations and things like that. Uh, but it's also important to speak out for environmental protection at a, at a regional level. And I think, you know, the mayor's Barrett's work with the um, Great Lakes St. Lawrence Cities initiatives, working with mayors to put out joint statements about protecting the environment. And when there are threats uh, to environmental protection, um, to speak out and, and point out that there's a better way, that there's a smarter way that you can do economic development that incorporates the environment and uh, environmental protection and economic growth that it's a false choice to have to choose between the two. Uh, it just takes some, some thought and collaboration to, to do it the right way. And Jesse, when you were here, I know you identified that early on with the UN Global Compact Cities Program as well, because I know you were um, very committed to continuing Milwaukee's participation and exchanging information between cities and highlighting what it is we're doing well and learning from cities all over the world um, as to what they're doing well and what the future possibilities for us might be as well. I think to answer your question, a really good approach to that is to educate people about what watershed they're actually located in. Uh, because most people in the region don't know what watershed they're in. And once we look at the watershed level, then we understand a lot of the interdependence that you're talking about. Um, where does the water come from? What rivers are flowing into the lake? Um, what is What are the tributaries feeding into those larger water bodies? And understanding the watershed as a whole, as, a part, as opposed to just your particular county, for example. And then overlapping that with the economic development zone and looking at how the zone, the municipality, the county, and the watershed boundaries are very different. And then overcoming the obstacles to cooperation between the watershed level and the governance level. Thanks, that's great. <laughs> I'll unmute myself. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Jess, and thank you for those responses. Um, I'm going to, we've actually come to time, I'm going to run it a little bit longer, so long as that's okay, another um, 10 minutes, if that's okay with our speakers here at the moment, just to, um, we've got an, that's fine, we've got another um, question that's um, coming through from Willemine Bosch. If, uh, I think you're right to speak, uh, Willemine, yes, if you'd I like to introduce you. yourself and, and um, yeah, share with us. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yes, my name is Willemien Bos. I'm uh, working for the Dutch uh, Standards Institute and also for ISO, the international standards body um, from the Netherlands. And um, yeah, my, my question actually connects quite well to the one of Jesse. And I think it's maybe something that is uh, that we're discussing about that it's difficult to connect um, uh, global or even uh, uh, regional initiatives to, to, to local or uh, um, ideas or strategies that come from within the society. Um, I noticed that there's um, sometimes initiatives on international level um, that um, reflects the uh, sustainable development goals. But if I look at my stakeholders on a national level, uh, they have different uh, interests and um, I'm trying to find a way to connect it. But uh, maybe to keep the question uh, easy, I would like to know from you, um, how do you incorporate um, local initiatives of, or initiatives that come from within uh, the society to your uh, government or governmental strategies or maybe on the municipality level? Uh, who'd like to take that one first? Thank you very much, Willemai. Well, um, I think um, I uh, told you an example how we did it with the, uh, the sewer. Uh, uh, we, we talked to um, uh, a company who, want, who has a uh, uh, solution with the robots for the pipeline monitoring. Uh, so, um, well, for us, it um, helps to reduce, uh, to reduce costs. And um, yeah, with that, we, we helped the company to come here and, um, uh, how do I say that? Well, to uh, do business here. 
Yeah, and, and help him with his first initial customers probably as well. Eh? So that's yeah. something hard to find. Yeah. I think that, that is one of the attractive things of having, having this, this concentrated uh, thing going around here at Water Campus. And I, I see the same at Milwaukee. If you, if you also act as a sort of a magnet for new ideas. So what we see here that also new companies uh, arise, which not even have started in our own region, but see if they attach themselves to us, they will become uh, stronger in, in a shorter time. So, and, and that is also having to do what Evelyn says, if also the governmental bodies around us say, we will not only choose for the cheapest solution, but we are also here to, de to help develop this new innovations, which can be eventually sold also outside our own region. That is something we will make uh, stronger together. And, and I think that is a, that's an important uh, thing here. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's no Willemine. That's a big task, but uh, that's, a, that's a nice answer. Thank you. <laughs> Eric, did you have a response? Um, well, I just wanted to say, I think these uh, collaborations among cities are so important. I mean, I love, uh, you know, Heinz presentation, and I think I'm going to, you know, try to use some of his ideas uh, here locally. I especially uh, like the, the your path that you had on the education uh, side of things where you know you, you start at the school age and you can build through secondary education and, and all the way up and um, that I think that's just that's great and that's where these kinds of opportunities to share ideas around the world uh, really helps to accelerate the pace of uh, positive positive change because you know if we weren't looking at other cities and, and challenging ourselves to at least keep pace or be or you know move with the times sometimes you can get well to sleep and uh, we know that the global challenges surrounding the environment and, and economic challenges require cooperation collaboration and, and working together so we're excited to continue to be part of this uh, UN compact cities program and, and learn from our, our friends in Leoward and, and elsewhere thank you very much I like that answer a lot <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ask um, Brian Braganton Smith to um, join me in. Um, introduce yeah, yourself. Uh, uh, very exciting uh, about uh, uh, what you're all up to. Uh, I'm a, a, a native Cape Codder. Cape Cod is a spit of sand that sticks out into the Atlantic Ocean. So we're uh, we're intimately connected to water. Uh, having grown up down here and been scuba diving since you know uh, I was a young kid. Uh, I personally watched uh, sort of the transition of coastal water quality uh, and uh, and sort of uh, as a uh, as an applied scientist uh, uh, this has been a driver for me it's it's exciting to me uh, and I, I think that there's a really important transition going on uh, from a standpoint of our culture and society uh, and it's from a reactive uh, sort of stance to a visionary stance. Uh, we're looking at where we are and we're, we're envisioning where we need to be. And I think I see this in all of the activities that are going on here. It's exciting because the challenges that we're facing are dynamic. Uh, and the only way that we're gonna be able to solve them is through collaboration and cooperation. Uh, and so seeing what all of you were doing uh, uh, and being, you know, sort of immersed in it myself, no pun intended, the, uh, the, the, the simple fact is that, that this is very promising. Uh, and uh, Milwaukee, uh, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the, it's just really great. And I, I, I uh, want to sort of ask uh, if we all feel, or, or you all feel, uh, that uh, also a, a more holistic approach uh, is really what we're talking about. And in essence, uh, we're talking about creating the infrastructure for a new sustainable community. Uh, and it revolves around water and the connection between water and energy and food. And, and looking at it this way is a completely different way of really uh, sort of looking at how we do things. Uh, and it sort of fits into that, you know, quote unquote, utility of the future paradigm. Uh, which seems to be trying to get a start, but like anything, you know, particularly in the utility sector, 
uh, change is geologic and time scale. So uh, it's it's very exciting to see what's going on. Uh, uh, I personally uh, am uh, am eager to participate because you know this is my wheelhouse, uh, and uh, and it's really exciting to see what you guys are doing. So uh, so how does one get involved? I guess is the best way to uh, to sort of stage that question. Is can I jump in on that one? Uh, what should I say? That's of course, uh, I, I think you, you said um, many right words, isn't it? Because if you look to a holistic approach, you know, at the end of the day, the water we discharge here is coming in the same sea as that uh, that is going through Milwaukee or to, through China in the sea. So we have to take care of our environment. and and But, well, I personally love to make small steps eh? because if you work with SMEs like we do, we can have a huge uh, uh, story. But at the end of the day, we must make clear where where one of our members can go ahead with and what he can do. So we always try to make small steps to make sure that everybody is keeps attached, eh? and, and and that is uh, for our focus. That's necessary. So how how to get attached? Yeah, uh, just. Just uh, meet us once a while and, and, and see how, how maybe there is some technology on your end with maybe having uh, possibilities on our end here as well. So what we look is to, to set up corporations. Yeah? And, and on the technology side, there's most of the time, of course, between companies. So but we are, as Water Alliance are more or less a connector. Yeah? So between several uh, companies uh, and, and, and but from a city level that may be totally different of course to get connected so uh. Brian uh, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe you can come to the water experience week in September in Leeuwarden yeah, you know, uh, to be honest with you, that uh, that was uh, quite an alluring uh, little little video there, uh, and uh, and I, I have to say I'm I'm, I'm completely impressed with uh, with what you're up to there, and uh, and like uh, Eric, uh, I uh, mirror uh, the uh, uh, the importance of the lifelong learning chain uh, because you know uh, life is an experience that we learn from, and and, and by learning and applying our creative genius, if you will, uh, we can change the world. Uh, and by collaborating, and this is kind of exemplary of it uh, right here, is that here we are in a discussion and we're in real time and we're really global in nature. Uh, so that to me uh, tells us that, you know, that this is an exciting place where we're at. Uh, and, uh, and there was one other point that I wanted to make, uh, uh, and that is, uh, everything is all connected. So if, if we're talking about a community that is wrestling with the water, wastewater, uh, energy agenda, and that community is also suffering from lack of available housing, uh, affordable housing and, and sustainability, putting those two things together creates the opportunity for the economic growth. Uh, and so that's something that is a message that rings with just about every community from Atlanta to Australia, it's, it's, uh, it seems to be a universal scenario. And again, it's, it has that holistic kind of, uh, kind of a call to it, uh, looking at it as, as part of the system rather than an element. Uh, and, uh, and it seems like that's the, that's the prevailing thread that goes through all of the things that we're talking about here. Definitely. Great. Can I ask, um, Eric, do you have a response to that before I um, close our, our, um, our gathering uh, I, today? I agree. Yeah, I agree with all of Brian's points and including his use of puns. Uh, I think he raised that. <laughs> um, but in terms of kind of a, a lead, lead behind, I would say the way to get involved is to go to our website, watercentriccity.org. Yeah. We do have a take action tab and we're looking for other cities to kind of um, use this kind of systems thinking around water. Uh, you can then branch it out into all sorts of sustainability issues. Like I said, with our refresh plan, uh, it touches everything from climate to food and, and all the rest that is so interconnected, but, but that's the place to go, watercentriccity.org and click the take action tab. And uh, I hope we can continue the dialogue at our, our respective conferences as well. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, and I'd just um, like to reinforce that point and, and uh, encourage where possible um, within both of those important events where we can have some cross fertilization, but have a, a space in particular 
for um, city governments, also their, their partners, to really um, have some time much greater than, than in, at the hour or so that we have here because it's fantastic to see the results, but the, what's required in actually really getting an understanding of how it's done, um, there's much more time involved with it. Um, I'd really like to thank uh, you all for your time. And it's, it's, um, and I'm so pleased that the technology worked. It all held together for it. And uh, we were able to be connected and we've, um, our, our uh, participants from the number of countries that are there, I'd like to say, yeah, a quick hello and thank you um, to those I haven't been able to mention by name, but I can see, see who's with us and I really appreciate it, a, a few of friends. Um, so that's, that's it for us today. And uh, there will be more. We have a, uh, another innovating webinar. We'll announce the dates uh, very shortly, but it's uh, related to overcoming poverty and economic and social inclusion. Um, with yep. um, examples from Porto Alegre in Brazil and others. So, yeah, terrific. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for organising. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's been great to have the time with you. Okay. Phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And good night. From and good night. <laughs> good, good morning, good night. That's the thing that blows my mind <laughs> is, you know, the, the, the time zone thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm leaving the meeting. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.